All right, everybody, now that we got the wing, the center wing done, time to turn our attention back to the landing gear. Got one side put together pretty good there. Uh, I'll show you everything I did over here. First step, we're going to uh, use type one rivets and rivet the gusset onto the little piece of angle. I found that as close as all the holes were there, it was hard to get the end of the air hammer in there. So I've been putting all the rivets the heads will be on the opposite side, so the the driven end will be the side that you see, but it's underneath the plane. They don't look bad, so it's it's all good, but that's how I did the last one. That's how I'm going to do this one. So we'll get these two riveted together, and then we can rivet the angle onto the uh, plate. All right, in order to drill the holes down in this plate, so we've got the piece of tubing down in there sandwiched together because it needs to be a tight fit on both sides of it. So now I can just start drilling down into the workbench on both sides and that'll have my holes through the plate and then we can rivet that on. And after all that riveting, you end up with a nice tight fit around the uh, strut. All right, now that the gussets are riveted on there, went ahead and made my two uh, little pieces to box them in. Drill that, that'll go right along the back. It does taper down because this end is a little bit narrower. So we'll drill those holes, match drill them into the gussets and then put those on with the type two AVEX rivets. And there we've got a boxed in landing gear. On this side, I've got the other side boxed in like that. This side, I had already fitted to the plane. Got the top piece, got the angle right. So now this side needs that top piece welded in. Then we're going to have to cut it off, uh, drill it for the axle. And then we have to do the same thing to the other side, but make it match this side as far as angle and everything to where it's a straight shot from one uh, wheel assembly to the other. And now with everything boxed in to this point, it's time to start doing a little welding on this. I had to adjust that uh, oblong the hole out just a little bit to change the angle of the, the spacer that went through there to get the right angle on everything once it was in the plane. Figured that might happen. So now I'm going to take it over. I'm going to take it over, put the spacer in, get it where I want it tack it then put it back in the wing double check and then i'll finish welding all right i got that welded into place so now the next thing i'm going to do is duplicate this on the other piece of tubing that's the right angle so we need to uh, duplicate it over there make sure they're both identical all right i said this before on staff but this is crude but effective i hadn't used the uh mill since the last time since I drilled that. On the original one, I just used an angle finder, found the angle according to the plans, drilled through it, and it was really close. Just had to tweak it just a little bit to get it to, to where when it was on the plane, the angle was perfect. So I just put this one back in there, run the drill bit through there to hold it in place. I'll measure the angle with the angle finder, put the new piece in there, and uh, put it at the same angle and go to drilling. Well, I've got the new piece in there, same angle. We'll uh, start it with the center drill and I'll take it out to a quarter inch, then work it on up to a half. So yeah, I've got the hole up to a quarter inch diameter. So we're gonna take it out closer to half. Got a little stubby drill bit in there. Since you're going into the edge of it, go real slow so it don't grab and mess anything up. Well, after making the first hole, I also double check. Well, I double checked a couple of times to make sure the uh, tubing hasn't moved in. Okay, we're through the first side. Checking the angle again, still spot on. Of 
finger down through the bottom side. Well, there we got the beginning hole. Hopefully you can see that, but I've got the two tubes laid right on top of one another. And that's right on the money. All right, the next challenge on the landing gear struts was to drill the holes where the axles go through. And they need to be 90 degrees off of where the angle pieces went to hook it to the wing. So I made a couple of little brackets here just to hold everything straight. Parallel this way, 90 degrees off here. Got it clamped in there, everything's lined up. There's the mark I need, 28 inches from the top of the strut. 28 inches from the top of the strut down to there. So now all I should have to do is center up the mill, drill all the way through both tubes, and make it 7 8 inch. Because that's the size of tubing that goes through there, and then we weld that in place. All right, it is looking good. Since I didn't have a 7 8 drill bit, I just hogged it out a little bit with the burr. And, yeah, she's, she's straight. She's in line there. So the next thing I need to do is I'm going to cut the legs off. I'll still leave a little extra to make it easier welding around. And I'll cut the legs off. And then I'm going to fit the whole assembly into the airframe. Both pieces. And then I've seen somewhere, I don't know if it was in the plans or whatever, but they recommend using a piece of pipe to go from side to side to fit in to the axles to make sure everything is straight and lined up. Okay, we're under the wing here. I've marked the spot where the gear leg needs to go through. Before I cut the hole on the other side. Basically just put that up there, marked where it was. Got a short little piece of tubing to finish the circle. So now I'll drill up through there with a step drill, get it close, then finish it out with the burr. We'll need to make a little notch on the side there to clear that piece of tubing that's welded to the top of the gear leg. One notch is all you need because you can slide one side of that tube through there, then spin it and slide the other tube through. And I put the notch on the back side where it's not very noticeable. It's covered up by the plate. So we'll get that in there. We'll get this gear leg on, put the gear leg on, on the other side and then start aligning stuff. Got the hole drilled in the skin. Got the leg put in there, and I haven't put the other leg on yet, but this one looks very much lined up properly. I checked the angle from here to here with my protractor. It's just what it should be, so if we can get this to line up at the other side, we can drill the holes in here and then get to welding in that. Now that's not looking too bad. Thing seems to be lined up okay, but we need to put something in between the two axle holes to make sure it is 100% straight across there. And before I do that, I need to make the spacers that go through the axles. Now, I didn't find the right size tubing when I was looking the other day, so I got some uh, just bar stock. So I'm going to have to cut it to length and then bore the center out to 5 8 for the axles. Now we can put those in there, find something to go across, line it up, drill there. And then weld the spacers in. Well, I cobbled up a straight piece of tubing out of some stuff I had laying around. You know, I machined these, put those in there. This is the little axle that I'll be using. Got one on each side. And look at that. It's nice and straight across. That is lined up right where it should be. So I'm going to drill and Cleco the gussets onto the strut tube. And then I'll be welding those in. I like it. All right, we got that section drilled, clecoed. So now it's time to weld. We got side one welded. Of course, I need to cut the end of the leg off. And I'll trim back the cross piece too. Left everything long because it is a lot easier to weld when you don't have to worry about the edge burning back. Plus... I also left the cross piece long because I don't know what brakes I'm going to use yet and I can always cut it off 
to fit whatever I need in there and that would be better than using a bunch of spacers later. So left it long too. What I've went and done is trimmed off the bottom. And then like I said, that cross piece was long. So I, I looked at the plans, got the distance it's supposed to be width wise, split the difference between the two sides. So this side is where it should be. There's a 3 16 hole there for an AN3 bolt. That'll be the axle uh, hold down when it's completely done. This side is still a little long. I'm going to leave that long until I'm sure what I'm going to do as far as brakes. So right now I should be able to rivet the gussets on for the mount and get it put in the plane and then do the same to the other side. All right, we got this section riveted together. She is ready to go on the airframe in a semi-permanent way. <laughs> There's no telling. I may have to take it back off later, but we're going to bolt it completely on. And remember, these rivets here are not your, they're a pull type rivet, but they're not your normal AVEX rivets. These are the C, CCPQ43 stainless steel structural rivets. And they are a bit pricey, about a dollar a piece. The plan said they originally had used the AVEX rivets, but I'd say they probably had a little problem with shearing those off on some hard landings. Be my guess. Look at that, one leg, two legs. Everything actually went back right where it should have been. Bolted in nicely. Put the uh, alignment bar back in, everything is still straight. So we're getting close. Let's switch now. Who wants to work on tires and wheels? Okay, what I got? Six inch Azusas, some tubes, and some tires. Now, the plans called for aluminum wheels. I went with the nylon ones because I've used them in the past. They work just great. And they are lighter than the aluminum. Since we're going for ultra lightweight, save weight wherever we can. So, get everything unpackaged, pull the wheels apart, get the tubes and the tires, and See what it looks like. Okay, these split rims got little notches to keep everything lined up. You've also got a cutout for the stem there. I generally just take the tube, put just a little air in it, make sure to powder everything good. Because this rubber will stick to itself otherwise. Just like a dirt bike. Powder the crap out of everything. The tube down in this little malformed tire. Yeah, uh, I, I may get a little carried away with the powder at times. And then you should be able to shove the wheel down past there. You can see this tire is all oblong that way. Yeah, that was the exact same way the other one was. I've already got it done. It was a pain to get everything lined up. The bolts also help to line things up a little bit. Push it together. You can look through the center. Make sure the wheel's coming together. And also make sure that your tube's not stuck in between the two. Which it's not. The tube was back in the tire quite a ways. Now, I'm going to snug down. As soon as I get the right wrenches, I'm going to snug down these bolts. They got nylon washers. And it is a plastic wheel, so just snug. And again, watch to make sure you don't have any tube in the gap. Snugged up, no tube pinched, stem looks straight, so we'll put some air in it, there we're going. So that's about 10 pounds, the maximum on the wheel is 20. Seems like on the Mini Max I run five or six pounds of pressure in them. Not very much pressure because with the solid axle, this is your shock absorber. Well, let's stick it on the plane. And here we go. 
Rolly. Got a Rolly over there too. Appears that those axles, since they're threaded on both ends, were designed to have a nut to hold it on there too. But the plans is to put a bolt through that hole to retain it. So we can once we get it set up with the brakes, we can cut that off. And uh, right now I didn't have any nuts, so I just slipped a piece of five ace heater hose over it and put a hose clamp on it because I just needed to be able to move in and out of the garage. I know, I'm a child. Now, I need to clean it off. All right, it is outside, it is movable. Still needs some more cleanup. I am happy with the progress so far. So now, next project. Well, the next project is getting the dang garage cleaned up. After that, I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to look at my parts pile, see what I've got, maybe, uh, uh, tail wheel, still got uh, elevator, still got lots of stuff to do, but at least it's mobile. Thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video.